are a full-time student or you work part-time or full-time or if you're a procrastinator like me or you simply believe that you cannot invest, invest all, of all of your time, time into studying, studying for an exam, exam that, will that will ultimately, ultimately determine, determine your future, your future med, school med school and, and whether, whether you become, you become a, doctor a doctor or not, or not. then this is the video for you. Hey guys, it's Tintin and welcome back to my channel. So obviously that intro was just an exaggeration. Just don't freak out when studying or taking the MAT. Just don't freak out in general. So before I rattle off the tips and tricks that I learned along the way when studying for the MAT, I just wanted to briefly talk about my score and my experience taking the online exam. As many of you guys know, part one consists of verbal, inductive reasoning, quantitative, and perceptual acuity. And part two consists of the sciences, which are biology, chemistry, physics, and the social sciences. I know it may seem daunting because it's like a lot of coverage and you take it in like less than four hours, but honestly, the exam goes by really quick and I'm hoping that the skills that I learned when studying for the NMAT will help make things easier for you guys and prepare better than I did for my first exam. The score that I got for the NMAT was a 98. My standard score was a 701. And what really pulled up my score, I believe, was my quantitative reasoning, which was an 800, and my chemistry, which was around a 700. That's the thing about the NMAT. You really have to put your effort into sections where people tend to get lower scores. If you are able to get a perfect or really high scores on specific sections that people have trouble with, that will really pull up your percentile. I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks that helped me along the way and hopefully this will save you guys so much time because I wasted a lot of time with unnecessary studying strategies that really didn't help with retention or test taking skills. So hopefully you guys will make the same mistakes that I did. Without further ado, let's get on with the tips and tricks so that you guys may start studying. So tip number one, before setting a study schedule, just sit down and take a mock exam. I know it's like really scary to just jump straight into the mock exam, but it's even worse to study straight into the material when you don't even know what your strengths and weaknesses are yet. The first mock exam that I took was from this book. Honestly, this this is this was harder than the end mat. And it also helped me gauge what topics I need to focus on more so that I don't waste my time studying topics that I'm already familiar with. I recommend buying it or borrowing it from anyone who's already taking the end mat because I feel like this really saved me. To me, it's worth more than any review center, to be honest. But I'll get into review centers a bit later. After taking a mock exam to point out your strengths and weaknesses, it's time to set up a realistic schedule. And this is where I put emphasis on realistic. You're probably gonna see a lot of videos out there which tell you to like wake up and follow a productive routine and to eat your avocado toast before hitting the books. But for a majority of us, that's that's not really gonna really happen. happen. Beautiful dreamer. For the schedule that I created, I started out with my weaknesses, which was surprisingly chemistry. Like I mentioned, chemistry was my second highest on the end mat. But before the end mat, it was one of my weaker sections next to physics. So when I created my schedule, I used the ultimate end mat study guide. So you could download this from filipino.net. Okay, so I just want to make a quick correction because I'm dumb. The checklist was downloaded from a Google Drive link which I will put below in the description box. Again, this checklist wasn't from Filipino, it was from a Google Drive link. And basically what I did, I kind of pinpointed all the topics that I was particularly weak with. And to be honest, I only used this schedule to keep track of chemistry and physics. Those were really my worst subjects whenever I would take practice exams. So I'm just gonna briefly show you guys how I wrote out my schedule and voiceover tinted is gonna take over and explain the whole thing because I kind of forgot <laughs> while filming just now so wait one sec guys okay everyone so I'm just gonna go over my four week study schedule and explain how I planned it in a way that worked out for me 
Of course, when it comes to cramming any national exam such as the NMAT, we tend to jump straight into studying faster than we jump to conclusions. So with this, I'd like to re-emphasize the importance of taking mock exams because separating your strengths from your weaknesses could allow you to organize a schedule that focuses on topics that you need more work with. So I started really studying during the month of November, which gave me four weeks to prepare for the NMAT as it was on December 1. As I mentioned, I wanted to focus my schedule around my biggest weaknesses which were chemistry, physics, and quanti. So every day before watching videos or hitting the books, I would do 10 quanti reasoning, 5 chem, and 5 physics problems. My main sources for practice problems were Khan Academy, Chem Libre, and also my NMAT practice test. I would eventually try to resolve incorrect answers that I have gotten in the past. So for the first three weeks, I wanted to focus on note-taking, practice problems, and making flashcards. And for the week before NMAT, I wanted to focus on taking practice exams and reviewing the flashcards that I made. Every day, as I mentioned, I would do practice problems concerning my weaknesses. And for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would study chem and physics, while for Tuesday and Thursday, I would work on biology and the social sciences. For Saturday, I would do practice problems for the part 1 section of the NMAT. And last but not least, if I could go back in time, I would have made some changes to my study schedule. First, instead of taking all the practice exams in one week, I would have taken them one to two times a week. Instead of focusing so much time on rewriting my notes and rereading my notes, I would have rather reviewed all my flashcards each day to help with my active recall and with my memory. Okay guys, so the next thing I want to talk is about practice exams. If you're the type of person who likes to rewrite their notes or to just read their notes over and over again, if you're the type to write down everything the professor says or make pretty notes and doodles on your notebook, I learned the hard way that no matter how pretty or aesthetic you make your notes, it's really not going to prepare you for test taking. With that again, I highly recommend these reviewer books. It's the NMAT Reviewer 2019 edition by Merle Merle. I'm sorry if I botched that name. Merle S. Alferez. And also, like I mentioned before, Filipino has their own NMAT mock exam online. The test is gonna be online for the time being, so that will also train you to look at the laptop for six hours. So to build on the idea of focusing on practice exams, like I mentioned, it's really best for you to practice looking at a computer screen for hours. And that's why I'm really recommending that you look up mock exams online, because if you're not used to taking a test for four hours, then probably Gonna have trouble taking the NMAT online. It's important that you buy a whiteboard ahead of time. The proctors allow that you use a whiteboard as scratch paper while you're taking the exam. You're not allowed to use paper at all so please please buy a whiteboard ahead of time. So with that just make sure while you're taking your online exams you practice using these whiteboards. This prepared me for the online testing environment of the NMAT and to be honest it really helped me save a lot of time because when I first took Filipino mock exam. It really strained my eyes at first but as I kept taking more online exams I eventually got used to the time constraints and I eventually got used to using this whiteboard as my scrap paper. Okay so next let's talk about review centers. Are they worth it? For me, no. <laughs> I did sign up for this review tutoring session thing and while their teaching was great I felt like it wasn't really for me because I find it easier to self-study by myself and while taking the class I felt like I could have been doing more practice questions and taking more practice exams. Nevertheless, the pros of signing up for a review center is they get to give you more study material and perhaps more mock exams that you can work with. So if you're looking to get more resources and material, you should sign up for a review center if you want to. To be honest, I only recommend review centers for individuals who don't really have a strong 
strong background in the sciences, so like biology, chemistry, and physics. If you find yourself having a good grasp of basic concepts in the sciences, then I highly recommend that you refresh them through Khan Academy. Actually, this is like my next tip. Make sure you diversify your resources when it comes to studying for the NMAT. For me, I use Khan Academy's MCAT study program, and I'll also link that down below because I use these videos to help refresh some basic concepts in chemistry and biology and the like. A lot of the NMAT is about understanding basic trends and concepts. For example, in chemistry, they may ask a lot of questions about ideal gas law, for example. They may ask questions like, if the volume goes up, what happens to temperature? If temperature goes down, what happens to pressure? Those are some concepts that you have to master and you have to know. So what also helped me for the NMAT was making flashcards for myself. I'm not gonna link down my study flashcards. I think it's better that you make your flashcards on your own to aid with your active recall and to help you familiarize the concepts that you're learning for the first time or refreshing. Some notable flashcard apps that I like to use are Quizlet and Anki. For the Nmat, I use Quizlet. It was First of all, easier to navigate online. And second, while I was rereading my notes and some basic concepts, I would just type the flashcard on my laptop, which made it easier than writing it down or typing it on my phone, like what I usually do with Anki. Quizlet really helped me memorize important formulas for physics and chemistry. It also helped me memorize basic concepts in sociology and psychology. So in the end, I highly recommend these resources that technology has to offer because it will save you a lot of time in studying which is usually taken up by unnecessary note taking or physically writing down the flashcard so without further ado i hope you like and subscribe hopefully this video taught you something even though i was just rambling the whole time and good luck on your nmat guys see you in the next video hopefully okay bye guys <laughs> <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.